what is the value of the digit 2 in the number 48.621. Now after the point, we have the decimal places. The first decimal place is the tenth place. So because a 6 is there, we say 6 tenth. In the second decimal place, we have the hundredth place, in other words. And so this is 2 hundredth. And in the third decimal place, we have 1. So that's 1 thousandth. So a thousandth place, in other words. So this 2 is actually in what? the hundredth place, so it's two hundredth. So our answer is 1A. Question two, what percentage of 50 is 10? So 10 out of 50 is what percentage, in other words? 10 divided by 50, now I'm gonna multiply by 100% to get it in percentage. When multiplying two fractions, I can divide the numerator with denominator using a common factor. 50 in itself gives us one, and 50 goes into 100 twice. Now I'm left with multiplying numerator by numerator and denominator by denominator. 10 times two, that's 20, over one, which is simply 20%. All right, now question three. In standard notation, we have the number 0 0.02086. Now, I want to write this number in standard notation. Another name for scientific notation, also called standard form. It must be written as a number between 1 and 10, multiplied by a power of 10. Now, where would we put the point? So, this number, 0 0.02086, becomes a number between 1 and 10. Well, we'll put the number after the first non-zero digit. It will now be 2.086. You might ask, what happened to the zeros? Well, if we put the point after the 2 and we have zeros at the beginning, I mean, those will be useless. It still will be 2.086. So that's a number between 1 and 10. So now it's written as A. So right away, we realize we can cancel off what? B can cancel off D as well. Now times a power of 10. Now what power of 10 will we use? Well, we want to write a power of 10 so that we can actually get back to the original, which is actually have to move to the left. And so we use a negative. And since it's two places, our solution will be negative two. So it's 2.086 times 10 to the negative two power. So our answer is gonna be C. But the point I wanna mention here is this, that once the number start with zero, it should be a negative power. And right away, you can cancel off the, the A, because we don't have a negative power there, right? We can cancel off the B, we can cancel off the D. Only C has a negative power. If the number of pupils is 840, so let's make a note of that, 840, how many teachers are there? So pupils to teachers is what? Is 20 to one. And how many teachers are there if we have pupils being 840? So that's a question we're trying to find. So now, now these are equivalent ratios, right? I mean, 20 to one um, being equated to 840 to what? So in other words, what would we have to do to move from 20 to 840? What, what would we multiply by, in other words? We'll do the same thing to the one. So in order to figure out what we multiply by, we do the reverse of multiplication, which is division. So 840 divided by 20 will give us what? Cancel off the zeros. And 2 into 84 goes 42 times. So we'll have to multiply by 42. So 20 times 42 will give us 840. And therefore, 1 times 42, what do to one side you do to the next? will give us the 42. So our answer is B. All right, so for question 5, we're told that a bag of apples can be shared equally among either 6 children or 10 children or 15 children. The minimum smallest number of apples that is likely to be in the bag is which of these numbers well let's start with the smallest the smallest number we've seen there which is 30 all right if we have six children can a bag of 30 apples shared equally among them let's see we have 30 apples want to share it equally among six children each child will get five apples let's look at um, 30 again can we share that set among um, 10 children each child will get three apples and let's look at 30 again. Can we share it among 15 children? Because we have 15 children, we want to share 30 apples equally among them, each I will get two. So basically, 30 works. And it's the smallest number we have there, so that will be the answer. The answer is A. So in other words, the LCM, the lowest common multiple of 6, 10, and 15, is 30. All right, so question number 6 is a really nice question. Very easy. If you look at what we're given here. Now, if you notice, the digits are the same. 43430 zero, um, 037037. Zero, zero, so a solution will have the same digits really. However, the point is not between 4 and 3. Where is the point in 43? Right at the end here. 
So in other words, they would have moved the point one place to the right. Now if you look at the 0 0.37, it's still 0 0.37 we have here. So since we have 0 0.37, 0 0.37, the 4.3 point is now at the end, they would have shifted the point one place to the right. So in our solution, all we need to do is shift the point one place to the right as well. So our answer is going to be 15 point, point will now be here between 5 and 9, 15.91. And so our answer is B. When you look at this number here, right, there's no digit after point. So that's 0 dp. And this number here now, we have 2 dp, two decimal places, two digits after the point in other words. So because we're multiplying, we need to add the number of decimal places, which is going to be 0 plus 2, which is going to be 2 dp still. So where would we put the point say so it's 2 dp? right between the 5 and the 9. So that's another way of looking at it. All right, so for number 7, we, we're told that x is a member of integers. Z here represents members that are integers, meaning you have like 0, you have negative 1, negative 2, and you keep on going the same sequence to the left. Keep on getting more and more negative. And as you go to the right, you get more and more positive, right? The number gets bigger, but in the same sequence. Okay, but let's get to the question at hand. So we're told that the x is a member of the set of integers such that x, if we're going to read in this way, is saying that negative 2 is less than or equal to x. So we read in this way, we're saying what x is greater than or equal to negative 2. But there's one thing I want to tell you quickly. A quick way of working out this question is this, look. This dash on the neat implies we're going to include a number negative 2. And going to the the right, this 4, notice that we have the dash on in it. Notice we have a dash on in it, means we're going to include what? We're going to include 4. So because we have a dash on in it, both inequality symbols, we're going to include the n numbers, negative 4, negative 2, and 4. And the only option that has that is D. So x, remember x is a member of a set of integers. x is a member of the set of integers. This means member of. The symbol here means member of or element of Z. So X simply represent the numbers that are member of Z, the set of integers. Now, since X is greater than going this direction, because you mean the opening first, right? When you go in this direction. So you're seeing the opening means greater than. Once you reach once you go in this direction, you meet the small part, you're saying less than. So this is less than and this is greater than. Once you go in this direction, I meet the great the opening first. Hope that makes sense. Now here's the thing about it. So I'm saying here that x is greater than negative two, but what's with, with the dash? I'm including negative two. So that means if I'm going to list these numbers, I'm going to start with negative two because it's greater than negative two but equal to negative two. So we're going to put equal to negative 2, in, involve, involve negative 2, that is. Then going up, increasing, we have negative 1, then we have 0. Keep on adding 1. Then we have 1, then we have 2, then we have 3, and so forth. But based on what we're told, we're told that x, right, this number x, right, there are these set of numbers represented by x, will be less than, than 4. But we're told to include 4 as well. So since we're going to include 4, we put 4 there, but we want numbers that are less than 4, which would be the 3, 2, 1, and so forth, going back that direction. So this is where we start with negative 2, and we end at 4. The numbers must include negative 2 and 4, but must be greater than negative 2, meaning these numbers, but less than 4, these numbers. All right, so we're looking at question number 8. Item 8 refers to the following Venn diagram, which shows two intersecting sets. P and Q. In Venn diagram, or in the Venn diagram, the number of elements in P is 5. The number of elements in Q, or in set Q, is 9. So we have 9 elements in this one, and we have 5 in this one. And the number of elements in the union of P and Q is 10. So altogether, we have 5 in set P. In set Q, we have 9, all right? But when you add up the number of elements in both sets, you're going to get 10. But that's crazy because 5 plus 9 is 14. 
So that what's happening here? We have 14 when we add 5 and 9. But we're told we're supposed to really have 10 in both sets. So what do you think happened? There's overlapping. And we simply subtract the numbers to see the, what's overlapping. And that's 4. So 4 is the amount that's going to be in the intersection. So in other words, what we have here over this side of the Venn diagram is actually um, 1 in P only. Belonging to P but not Q. So when we add the 1 plus the intersection of 4, the amount in the intersection, we're going to get 5. And since we have five in, 4 in the intersection, how many, how many should be in Q only? Members of Q but not P. That's going to be 5. So we add 5 plus 4 plus 1, we get the, the 10. And so our answer is really 4, the amount in the intersection. Now, yeah, our time is up. But let's just show you quickly how you can actually do this another way. We can also use the formula. You can think about the, num the number of elements in the union. This this symbol out here that looks like which is an n. It means number of elements. And in bracket we have the set in bracket to find the number of elements in the number of elements in what the union. So this little curve. That's a u. So it means number of elements in the union, bringing together all the members of P and Q together. All right, is equal to the number of elements in P, the number of elements in Q. But we realize that when we add them up, look guys, when we add up the five of P and the nine of Q, we actually get 14, right? But we're told we're supposed to get what? 10 in the union. So obviously that doesn't make sense because 10 is not equal to 14. So that means we have to reduce this four this reduces 14 by 4. We have to subtract 4 for that to work. So where does this 4 comes from for us to get 10? Well, it comes from the intersection that we are subtracting. Subtracting the intersection, which is P intersect Q. All right, that's the number of elements in the number of elements in the what? In the intersection. So that's the formula, guys. All right. So in the event that we did not know, or you know, I didn't know this, that that's we have 4 there. I can just put an x minus x and then solve for x, All right? So I'll transpose the x over and transpose the 10 over. So I'll have positive x over here and the 14, put it back, and the 10 goes over as minus 10, and so we have x equal 4. But you guys see how I got it quickly, right? I just recognized that, look. I supposed to have 10 in the union, but when I add 5 and 9, I got an extra 4 because I get 14. So let's subtract them, and that's going to be the intersection of 4. Quickly done within 20 seconds.